believe God with me for things to happen in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Because there's, there's things that God wants to do in your life. Anybody just by raising your hand say, I, I sense God touch my life tonight. I just, I just, I sense God touch my life. I'm not looking for approval. I'm just looking for that others can be, you know, be sensed that confirmation that God's going to, well, today, uh, God wants to continue to touch your life. He wants us to be being filled with the Spirit. What's, what is that being touched? It's a fresh filling of God in you. And he wants a, a continual be being filled with the Spirit of God in our life. Real worship, what we've just experienced, helps keep us full of the Holy Spirit. Singing songs are good. Worship is great. And there's a big difference. And so as we uh, sing, as we worship, it is one of, Paul says, it's one of the ways that we are being filled with the Spirit. We are encountering His presence. We are, 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 are being restored in the things that need to be done in our life. Uh, a scripture that I want us to look at, and I do want to, want to share some things that, have, that I have in my heart to share tonight. I, I, I don't think that it's odd that it connects together here. But I want us to look for just a little bit here in, in one particular scripture in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 14. The Word made flesh. The Word made flesh. If we're not careful, we can make Christmas such a hallmark holiday, they forget the spiritual impact of that day. If we're not careful, um, you know, and I just went to Sam's, uh, had his little little, uh, Christmas program today, and they had the candy canes, and they sang, and they did, you know, that's all wonderful. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, But but folks, I want you to know that uh, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ should still have a ripple effect in our life today. And it should be more than just uh, uh, trees and and gifts uh, of the natural end. There should be the spiritual impact here. Probably to me, John chapter 1 verse 17 sums up the Christmas story, the the reason, the biblical theological reason for, for Christ's coming, probably better than any verse that I can think of. It's a simple verse. It's a simple phrase, and that's why I guess I like it. And I want to really encourage you, um, you'll not get anything out of this message tonight if you won't meditate on that phrase right there, the Word became flesh. But if you'll start to meditate on that, and you'll start to understand that this was the spiritual principle of which God Almighty chose to bring the Word and put inside flesh was not just so that we would have a Messiah, but so that we would have an example of how we are to live our life today. The Word still needs to be put in our flesh. I said the Word still needs to be... The light just came on to some of you probably right there. The light just came on. But the Word needs to be put in my flesh. And only you can do that. Let's look at this for just a few moments, just to remind ourselves that the, 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 that the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, there was, there was a lot of temporary things that went on. Uh, uh, there was the little town of Bethlehem, and there was a, a star. There was a temporary thing of the shepherds coming. There was the, the temporary thing of, of, a, of, a, of a virgin who gave birth to a child there in, in, in the manger. Those are all events that happened, and if we're not careful in our day, we, we reenact them, we put them on Christmas cards, and then we, we try to go back and we focus on that temporary thing, and there's nothing wrong with what that was and the event that happened then, but folks, what we really need to be focusing on is what is the eternal thing? What is eternal? What, what, what went on in that event that is still affecting lives today? The Word became flesh. John chapter 1 verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. An incredible compaction of a tremendous theology that is in this. But more than anything, what I want us to to really, for the next just this couple of minutes here, 10 minutes or so, would you be able to, to really pour this out on the inside of us? Jesus may not be with us here physically anymore, but the Word of God still transforms lives today. God's Word still is impacting lives today. 
And we need to make sure that we receive the word just like Mary received the word, just like the disciples had to receive the word. We, folks, I think um, um, Kathy actually had it on her Facebook page today. Someone had each of us uh, 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 as an innkeeper who decides, is there a room for Jesus? And I kind of took Jesus out and put the word in there. Each of us today still must make a decision on does the word of God have place and impact in this flesh? Because that's the will and the word, will, plan of God for our lives today. God and his word are one. How we treat the word of God is how we treat God. You know, John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. If the word was God, then the word is God, and the word always will be God. We should get that stirred up on the inside of us. Church, the, the, in America, we have gone to sleep where we see the intensity and the value of the B-I-B-L-E. We say we believe the Bible, but we don't act like it. We say we believe the Bible, but, but, but it's, it's oftentimes optional in how I feel or what I think. We need to go back and understand that he is the almighty God and that we can trust his word in our life. God is the word. Here's a great scripture, and many of you, uh, I'm sure, know it, but I uh, maybe don't know exactly where it was. But in, in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, Numbers 23, 19, you can write the scripture down and meditate on it a little bit later. It'll stir you up. Uh, it's Old Testament, but the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. And, and, and Paul said if it was in the Old Covenant, then we've got a better covenant, so this has still got to be true in our life. Listen to this verse. Uh, it says, God is not a man, so, that, so, so he does not lie. Can someone other than Dr. Mike be thankful for that? Isn't it good that when you read your Bible, that you don't have to wonder, is God lying to me? When he says, cast all your cares on me, for I care for you, he's not lying to you. When, when he says, I'll meet all your needs according to my riches and glory, he's not lying to you. When he said, by Jesus stripes you were healed, he's not lying to you. When he says, I have a place prepared for you and I will come again, he's not lying to you. And so we need to understand that God is not a man that he would lie. We could even go this far. God is not a man. It is impossible for him to lie. So when the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we've seen Jesus' life, we've seen the word come to pass, everything that Jesus did demonstrated what the Father's will and word is and, and still is available for us today because he has not changed. It would be wonderful, it just stopped right there, but he con 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 continues on and he says, he's not human, so he does not change his mind. Glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I won't say a word about women. I'm just saying God never changes his mind. Amen. I don't mean that bad. I like sometimes we need to change our mind. Sometimes men just get bullheaded and go in the wrong direction and, and need to change their mind. That's why we've got our wives with us, to be able to help us. Women to give us some instruction and guidance along the better pathway of life. But I'm just saying God never changes his mind. He doesn't need to change his mind because his ways are always the best ways. His ways are always the right way. And so it's wonderful that we see this scripture that God and his word is one, that we can trust him, that he doesn't change his mind along the way. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? I'm still reading the Bible that you said you believed. Has God ever spoken his word and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Folks, would you get that verse on the inside of you so you don't listen to the lies of the enemy when you do and you look at the Bible and you read something and say, well, God didn't do that for me. The Bible is true. And if God promised it, then we're going to stick with it. If something didn't come out the way you thought it was going to come out, it's not because God changed his mind. It's not because God doesn't do those things anymore. I want you to know that God is spirit and God is truth. Those things never change. You Never change. Never change. 
Jesus, if he was spirit and truth that came upon the, and, and did what he did, then God still does what Jesus did. Amen? Amen? He does not change. And if Jesus, the mouthpiece and the living example of the word of God said, the things that I do shall you do also and greater things than these, then that's what the Bible says. Right. Well, pastor, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it to the degree I want, but I'm going to believe the Bible instead of what I see because I don't like what I see. I don't want what I see. Too many of you want what you don't want. You're wanting the wrong thing. We need to want the word of God. Amen? Amen. And believing God's word along the way, the flesh, the word become flesh and dwelt among us. So folks, we need to stir up on the inside of us. How does this still impact our lives today? How is it impacting your life? What's stirring? What's challenging you right now? Let me simply ask you this. What has most influence in your life? The word of God or the temporary circumstance you're facing? What has the most impact on your life? The eternal word of God or the temporary situation that you're facing? I would say other than, of course, the word, 99% of what's going on in your life right now is temporary and it will change and most of it will change in 24 hours. How you feel right now, how much money you got right now, the value of your money right now, your emotional state right now, all those things will change within 24 hours. The dollar constantly is in flux. Your people's emotions are constantly in flux. Situations are constantly in flux. Just a few, you know, a little bit before church, I ran home. Lots of times Wednesday nights I go home and, and lots of times I change my shirt or something like that, just refresh up and come back. Got a phone call real quick, Zach, dad, dad, uh, uh, pastor, pastor, uh, dad, dad, uh, uh, get over here quick. Uh, I think the water, uh, water pipe under the, the classroom is busted under the floor. It's like, okay, things have changed. So, you know, you, you jump in the, I didn't come over here in a panic. I just came over, okay, what did well, it wasn't a water the pipe that broke. It was something else. So it changed. Everything changes. One minute we think we're having a disaster. Do we need to close church? Do we need to close it down the gym? No, no school tomorrow because no water in the building. Change. 30 seconds later, no, it's just this. We fix it. It's different. Isn't that amazing? So in our lives, let's stick with the eternal word of God, the faithful word of God. Stir up on the inside of us. His word never changes. And let's then, would you do this? Take the promises of God and put pressure on the temporary things that need to change in your life. Take the eternal word of God and say, this needs to change because of what God's word says. This needs to change. My emotions need to change because the word says, I have a sound mind. My, my, the, my emotions need to change because I'm not controlled by how I feel. I'm, I'm controlled by the word of God in my life. My physical body needs to change. My finances need to change. Whatever needs to change in your life, it's going to change anyway. Let's put some spiritual pressure on it and not just leave it out there to who knows what. Let's, take con let's just say it this way. Let's take control of our lives by the word of God on the inside of us. What right now is stirring on the inside of you that needs to change? What in your life? You need to allow the word to become flesh on the inside of you and then for it to come and flow out of you to be able to change those things that are around you. God's word is eternal and he can be trusted. We can depend upon him. Start to allow that word that's in you to speak out the will of God for your life. Number two, real quickly, God's word is eternal eternal. I don't know how long that is. I haven't lived that long yet, but it's a long time. I'm getting old, but I'm not that old yet. It's eternal. God's word, there is no end to it. The word became flesh. The word of God did not start when Jesus was born. You understand that. The word always was, and the word always will be. It just manifested in Jesus when he took on that form. Folks, that's what God wants to do in our lives. He wants that eternal word to get on the inside of us. He wants that word to get in us. He wants that word to renew our mind. He wants that word then to be able to, why? For what purpose? Jesus went about doing good and healing all that oppressed the devil. Jesus went about being the savior of the world. Jesus wants his body, his church, to go out and do what he did. 
but we can't do what he did without the eternal word in our life. Matthew 24, 35, the Amplified says, heaven and earth, as you know it, will, will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Again, he says, as you know it. We can just say that in the, in the greater scope of things on, on just how this world is established and stuff. But I want you, again, to understand at what, what you know about today, it can all change tomorrow. What you know right now about the problems of life, you know, it can all change. But I want you to know the eternal word of God, we can know what his will is. We can then, then follow after his word in our life. How does this still affect our lives today? The word of God, God's will, is going to be with me my whole life and is going to reveal his will in my life. Too many Christians are running around looking at what's God want me to do? God wants you to obey the Bible. Not just the Ten Commandments, not just the Beatitudes. He wants you to do the, the, the other things too. He, he wants you to have the joy of the Lord as your strength. He wants you to, as we've said it several times, but it just keeps coming back to me, he wants you to cast all your cares over on the Lord. Just as much as he doesn't want you to go out and commit adultery, he wants you to cast all your cares over on the Lord. Because it's in the same Bible. Huh? So many times people are walking around and saying, well, I haven't done any of the, the big sins. Well, folks, I want you to know disobedience is disobedience. Now, don't get me wrong here, but, but I'm going to use an extreme illustration. Disobedience of, and, and to go out and to steal. If I go out down here to save a lot, and I want to save a lot, so I take a gun with me, and I, I, I just uh, uh, load up my grocery cart and, uh, and uh, want them to unload their cash register for me, uh, that'd be wrong. Is anybody, would everybody agree with me that would be wrong? Unless, of course, I paid tithes off of that. But that, no, uh, that'd be wrong. That's just as much wrong as if I, if I refuse to cast all my cares over on the Lord. Both are disobedience to the word. Well, why, but we have thought one is more wrong, if I could say that way, because it's illegal. And the other one's not as wrong, it's because everybody does it. But if Jesus is Lord of our life and we're walking around with, with cares and worries and fears in our life, then we're not a good representation of the word that's in us. Amen? I know it's getting quiet, but, 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 but we're, we'll be wrapping up here really quick here. And so we need to see that this needs to be impacting our life because I, I don't know what Bible translation you have, but mine still says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and for, forever. And if Jesus is the word, then he is the same forever. And so the situations that I face, the feelings that I have in my life, I need to start to realize that, that the word is more, more present and more powerful in my life. And I need to start acting like I believe not only that the word was made flesh in Bethlehem, but that the word has been made flesh in my life. And it's going to impact and change my life as well. Finally tonight, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We beheld his glory. Jesus said, I'm coming back for a glorious church. Most church people don't even know what, what that is. They, they think it's just kind of a nice polished up version of us or something or other. The glory of God, the, the evident presence of God. In the Hebrew, the word glory there means heavy or weighty. The glory of God, it's, it's, it's just what we, during worship, where we just sense the presence of God. Like a weight that comes upon us presence of God. Jesus did none of his miracles until after the Holy Spirit, the glory of God came upon him. The Bible says, you know how Jesus got out of hell? You know how he got out of hell? It says that the glory of God raised him out of hell. The Spirit of God, that resurrection power, the same glory that wants to be upon us, which is upon the word in our life. Listen to these words, and we'll close with this. Jesus says this in John 14, 13. He says, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it. Why? So that the, the Son can be glorified to the Father. 
the glory of God on our life is when we ask, ask the Father to move in such dimensions that it's obvious that Jesus is the reason. Let me ask you real quickly. Are you asking things that are god size? Are you asking things that are miracles? Are you asking things of God that, that it would be impossible to happen with us, but with God all things are, are possible? God does not get glory by you just suffering through and making it. God gets glory when we call on heaven and he shows up and it's obvious. It's up. That may be during times of suffering. Jesus glorified the Father in the way he went through his time of suffering, but it was because of his connection with heaven that it was manifested in his life. And when Jesus went around doing miracles, it would often talk about how God was glorified. This happened, that happened, and they glorified God. The church, we're supposed to be experiencing the glory of God, not just arresting upon us, but empowering us. How does that work? We get the word moving on the inside of us. And we start to then speak the word of God out of us. We start to declare the word. We start to obey the word. We start to expect the word to work in our lives. We expect the living word of God to transform and change us on the inside and renew us. And all of a sudden, we're starting to believe the word is true. Amen? Amen. And it's like, it is like a light bulb that goes on. And all of a sudden, you start to believe that word is true. And when you start believing it's true, then you start to really asking God problem is we've tried to ask God for miracles before we really believed in miracles. We've kind of hoped and looked with one eye to God going to do it or not. But we need to get to a place where we are dumbfounded when it doesn't happen. Are we there yet? Not quite. But we're going in Jesus' name because he wants to be glorified in this day. Father, we just thank you for your presence. Thank you for the word made flesh amongst us. Thank you that it was, was an example of what God wanted to do through, through us. By the power of the Holy Spirit coming alive on the inside of us and being born afresh and anew. Having your word reveal to us the plan and the will of God on the inside of us and then for us to go about and declare the will of God, demonstrate the will of God so that you are glorified. May you be glorified in our lives. Not just that we stay free from sin, but that we're doers, that we are kingdom builders, that we are, we are bondage breakers, that we are liberators as we go out into this world around us. So Father God, put in us what we need so that we can do what you've called us to do, be what you've called us to be. And this day and this hour, Jesus' name, amen.